Hi Crypto Devs, Liarco here, and in today's video I want to show you how you can set up your Windows machine in order to run my ERC721 collection project correctly. Let's get into it. Before I start, please keep in mind that this is a tutorial for beginners. If you are an experienced developer, you might already know how to install all the required software and you might also prefer other ways of doing it. For example, Linux distributions come with awesome package managers out of the box, such as APT, YAM and so on. But in this case, it's much easier to show people how to use other tools such as Brew so they don't have to deal with different commands or custom repositories in order to get things done. I'm also gonna leave the whole process there, including errors, so you can see what may happen during the setup process. Okay, so here we are in a brand new Windows virtual machine. Let's install some software. First of all, I'm gonna search for Visual Studio Code. We can download from the official website. The stable build is fine. And once downloaded, we can install it. This is gonna be a pretty basic tutorial, so I'm gonna follow all the default settings. I'm just suggesting you to check these options here because they're pretty useful in order to open files and folders with Visual Studio Code. And we can launch it. So here is Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna choose the dark theme and I'm gonna leave everything as default. And now in the extensions tab, I'm gonna install the Solidity extension. And while this is installing, we can go on with our dependencies. So next is Python. We go to the official website and we download it. We follow the default installation method, we confirm it and we leave it in the background. Another dependency is Node.js. Here is the website and as you can see we have multiple versions available. I'm gonna go with the LTS, long-term support, and you can also download older versions if you need them. You can see that Python was installed successfully, and I also suggest disabling the path length limit. This can help with really big dependency trees. I'm gonna close this, and we can install Node.js. Another software that we're gonna need is Git, the version control system. We can download the version for Windows. And in the meantime, Node.js has been installed successfully. Now we're gonna install Git. And in this case, the setup wizard has a lot of options, but we're gonna keep everything really simple and we just go with the default settings. And now let's see if everything is working correctly. I'm opening a PowerShell terminal and I'm gonna run Git, version, this seems fine, node, version, fine as well, npm, version, and in this case we also need yarn. But as you can see, yarn is not recognized as a name for a comment, so it seems like it's not installed. It should be included with Node.js, so let's see what the website is saying about this. 
we can go to the getting started page installation and as you can see there are a few commands that we should run depending on the node.js version that we are currently running in our case it should be core pack enable I'm gonna copy this and paste it here and operation not permitted this command must be run as an administrator so I'm gonna open the PowerShell but as an administrator now if we run this command again it works fine we can run yarn now and we get another error this is not the same one as before as you can see and we also have a link that we can follow this is a permission error so we are not able to run this script because of the execution policies if we go to this page we see that we can change the option and there is a lot of documentation about how to do it in this case I suggest you running this command in the common user terminal set dash execution policy dash scope current user dash execution policy bypass and we are also gonna force this this is the command that you should run and of course I'm the king of typos so this is not the correct command this is the correct command okay so now it seems like it worked let's run yarn version again now it's working perfect now we need to install truffle and we need to install it globally so I'm gonna use npm install global truffle and this is probably gonna give us an error too but I want to show it anyway so you can know what to do in case you find yourself in the same situation we can simply ignore all those warnings and there it is a huge error but you should always take a look at what it's saying because most of the times it's gonna tell you what to do in this case you can see that we have a comment here with a URL let's go to that website here we see that in order to use this package properly we should have something installed on our machine and the thing that we are missing in this case are the Visual Studio build tools so instead of downloading them from here since they are a bit outdated I'm gonna search for it and as you can see there is an official website from Microsoft that allows us to download a lot of things so the package that we are looking for is under the tools for Visual Studio section and here are the build tools for Visual Studio we confirm this And then we are asked to choose which components we would like to install and if we go back to the page we see that it's saying that we should install the desktop development with C++ workload and there it is so I'm gonna check this and install this is gonna take some time but it's gonna download and install your packages at the same time so this is pretty cool
and this is done. We can close it. And now let's get back to PowerShell. We can now run npm i-g truffle again. No errors this time. It looks promising. The stuff that you see here, the vulnerabilities, are related to the warnings that you see up there. And you can just ignore them in this case. Now, if we run truffle dashboard, you can see that the command is running and the truffle dashboard opens up correctly. So, everything looks fine. Let's close some windows. And now we can download the collection project. I'm gonna open the Ashlips Lab profile on GitHub. We look for the NFT ERC721 collection and we can download the latest version. We extract this and let's open the folder with Visual Studio Code. I trust the authors, so I'm gonna click that. And now let's run some test commands in order to see if everything is working fine. First of all, I'm creating two terminals, one for the smart contract and one for the DAP. And I go into the smart contract folder and I run yarn so I can install all the dependencies. At the same time, I'm going into the minting DAP folder and I'm going to wait before running the yarn command because this is just a virtual machine so the resources are limited. Okay, let's install the dependencies on the dev side. And while we wait for the dev to be ready, we can run yarn compile. This is gonna create all the TypeScript typings for our smart contract. And as you can see, it's also gonna ask us to send anonymous data to the art ad team. I'm gonna leave this to true. And it's done. Now also the minting dev seems to be ready. So we can run yarn dev server. We have to allow Node.js to bin to some ports on our machine. And the build was successful. Let's open the URL here. And as you can see, here is the dev. Of course, we don't have MetaMask, so an error is popping up, but everything is working fine. You should now be able to take a look at the other videos about how to use the project, because from now on, everything should be the same for any operating system. And that's all for this video, I hope this will help you starting your project, and if you have any questions or anything you would like to see in the next videos, please let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, and bye!